How does Lean Six Sigma compare to what we've learned about Lean and satisfying Demings? Did we see any grand bargain in her? Yeah, we generate up here our host and planning, but we negotiate and ripple back and we depend on them employees as being the most knowledgeable about their process, right? How about is the Kaizen here welcome there? Well, they talked about Kaizen, and there's a Kaizen guy over there on the side, and eh, maybe. Kaizen continuous improvement? Kaizen style, low cost? Are we going to buy a whole bunch of equipment and get the latest technology? And we got many tabs, and we got all kinds of stuff out there. Only well, problem with some of those, those nice machines we know from our computers, one thing you can't escape, garbage in, garbage out. Visual management. Do we see any visual management with that Lean Six Sigma? Did we see any value stream mapping? Total productive maintenance? Kind of touched on a little bit, but, but it was pretty oblique, wasn't it? Standardized work. Continuous flow. Plan, do, check, act. That's kind of buried in there as a process, okay? Proactive root cause problem solving. Bet your bottom dollar, man. We got all kinds of design of experiments and we got all kinds of stuff, you know, we can do this and that. And that's where Six Sigma is really strong is being able to differentiate the root cause problems from, from the non-root cause problems. Just in time. Uh, you see this thing there just in time? And of course, what we're talking about is the difference here between Sigma, Lean Six Sigma, and the total quality management. Now, total quality management is one of the three cornerstones for a lean enterprise. Total productive maintenance, cutting down, moving the routine and maintenance to the operators, and cutting down and breakdown, the costly breakdown maintenance. Total quality management is a way of managing the quality system and getting everybody in the company involved. Okay, and then we have just in time. That's your three cornerstones of a lean network. Let's explore another footnote. Again, from the power of positive reference, although Lean Six Sigma has arguably transformed today's business environment, including previously unheard of levels of productivity. Wow, I could be against something, sounds that good. Oh, the worker in a culturally diverse environment still needs relief. This is a quote. The human dimension in is the one area that remains to be addressed and is in need of major progress. Do we get to see Graham Barton and Lean Six Sigma? I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> How do these programs do? Do we believe that Six Sigma and TQM share much common support for each other? Yes, no, BCAP, that's the whole purpose here. I can tell you what I think, but geez, does that help you learn anything? I, I think they share some common yeah. support, but not much. Not much. Is none, not much? <laughs> I'm just asking. I'm trying to bait you here. There's a, there's a couple of things. There's a couple of things that kind of go at it from totally different directions, but might have some similar results, yeah? How about lead six sigma and GQM? No. Saying yes, no. There's a few lean tools in there, but who decides how and where and why to apply, uh, apply them, right? And we did give, we did give the employees a little bit of a nod by allowing them with a just do it. We assume that they are allowed to do some stuff with little or no review. Yes? So maybe there's a little bit. And I just got this book again. I loaned it to Quan here to look at. And that's your name, right? Yes, sir. Yes. Okay. It's called Ultimate Six Sigma. 
And the reason I get that book, there's a whole chapter four in there that he talks about the difference between six sigma and sick sigma. Why is it called like that? Because he said there is a lot of, chapter four is basically about the height of six sigma. Now this gentleman knows what he's talking about. This gentleman was one of the key people at Motorola when they implemented Six Sigma back in the mid 80s. Mm -hmm. I also worked with another guy, I forget this guy's name, he's on, he's on the sheet. I also worked with a PhD statistician from Motorola in addition to this guy and a pretty high powered group of people. They tried to do it right and they succeeded. This guy's name is Kiki R. Boat, B-H-O-T-E. Now, neither one of those two, I don't think, you really got credit for it, but they were the ones working in the trenches. The one with the ultimate six sigma. But in the back of this book, he has one nice little statement that kind of sums it all up. Why well, can find a company to a handful of elitist black belts, talking about six sigma, of course, when we can convert all the people to black belts at a fraction of the cost and with far greater effectiveness. So I've asked Quan to look this over. He's had some experience with Six Sigma, both good and bad, I think. This process deserve a little more attention. I would say I feel a lot com more comfortable when I'm reading through here that Ultima Six Sigma is the next step in Six Sigma, and it's a lot closer to leading from what little bit I've read. That's what I'm asking Quan to look at. It. Now remember, we also had, on one of our previous sessions, we had a deal about the easy five-step process to, to process Kaizen ideas, right? And we offered some help in the continuous improvement and also in 5S. Well, here's another one, courtesy of Bruce Harold Smith from Eli Lilly. Where to find opportunity? Basically, he's, he's saying, okay, we had some stuff about Touch Kaizen and 5S. And he's saying, okay, look at your strategy. What are your key strategic objectives? Look at your financial. Where does all the money go? Look at your process. What just doesn't work like it should? Remember, we're trying to find an opportunity here to do Kaizen. Put in a, a, a continuous improvement idea. Get it approved. Get it on that Kaizen Wall of Fame at your company. Yes? Or listen to the voice of the customer. How happy are your customers? So this is another cut, another way of looking at how you might find an opportunity for a Kaizen event. So it's offered to you for free here at the end of our TQM and, and Six Sigma presentation. Any questions, comments, things you'd have done differently, or wish I hadn't brought up at all, I'm fair game. Basically what I, I think what we're trying to see here, and, and this ultimate Six Sigma helps even strengthen more, I think, and, but we want to look at it, and that is, there's not much commonality, even though they started out from the same place. One of the problems with Six Sigma, it, it's very fashionable. Motorola found that when they went to try to share this with people, with other companies, they tried very hard to share this stuff, with what they put into it. People didn't really want to hear, a lot of people didn't really want to hear that. They were more interested in how nice it looked on their logo. They didn't have any problems. They were being pushed by their financial types. If you want a good rating on Wall Street, you better toe the line. A hot phrase for right now is Six Sigma. So you better show that you have some use of Six Sigma. But anyway, you know, so some of this stuff, it's become very fashionable. Oh, the macro they got, one of the articles I got from the ASQ was the power of positive psychology in the Dimec model. And I'm saying, Whoa, what else are we going to, what other kind of halo are we going to put around this thing? You know? And there's been a variety of things. I'm not saying Six Sigma is a bad program. 
I'm just saying from my experience that when I walked into a contractor shop in support of my sponsor who's trying to buy this system and he sees this nice dog and pony show in the boardroom and when we walk out he said you've been on the production line did you see any evidence of it out there it sure looks slick in there and about 75 percent of the time I really had to say I'm sorry I didn't see any of it out there as far as I understood that uh, only like top management like people who has like uh, Six Sigma certifications, which is very expensive, around like seven thousand, ten thousand. About seven thousand dollars, seven yeah. eight thousand dollars in about nine months of your life. Yeah, and the only those people who has a certification who are decision makers that they do this uh, solving problems, not like in lean. It's more simple, where like anyone, like employees, they work there every day the and they get. Have and they the think, knowledge. yeah, exactly. like with Kaizen, that anyone every day can they just change a little things and how they can uh, do more improvements. And, but in Six yeah. Sigma, with all the expenses and stuff you're paying, <laughs> if you don't, if you can't show a hundred or two hundred thousand dollars savings, <laughs> nobody wants to mess with it. They ain't worth their time. I dark. remember Stefan showed me uh, statistics. He, he was working on something and he was researching how these two programs work and he showed me like a million dollars like how when two different companies they work with different these programs one was Lean, one was Six Sigma and they showed uh, like how they uh, save money and how the Six Sigma spent money and it's a lot of like me into billions of dollars I was really impressed about it well, I know that not everybody can go about and get the uh, Six Sigma uh, certification. They should uh, have uh, experience on the project and like the know. amount of the uh, project, like it should be like uh, like 100,000 project, the whole budget, the whole million, and then those like, I mean like top management like people. But see, with Titan, the first thing that Franciscan Alliance out here did was a Kaiser on how to how to save half the coffee filters that were being thrown out of the uh, break room. Yeah. So that's you couldn't even afford to get your Six Sigma tools out to analyze that thing because it wasn't hundreds of billions of dollars, and nobody could put it on their resume and say, oh, "I saved so and so ten billion dollars." Well, coffee filters, give me a break. That's like that. Um the classified ads that I was looking at with the wanting Six Sigma um, applicants. Mm -hmm. They're saying but it's just a piece some of Some companies that just required uh, uh, employees that they should have uh, certification. Why would they do that? Why, why, why would do I mean, they want good employees, yes. Okay, that's one answer. I get a study Six Sigma too, but I don't know. Like, uh, they cost $6,000. They want more golf partners or something. It's, they cost you seven thousand dollars when they want you to come in with the black belt six certification already under your belt. That's seven thousand or eight thousand or ten. If they have to send you somewhere, it's higher than that. That comes out of there. That stays in their pocket because you paid it just to get in the door. Yeah. Plus the six to nine months. It's just like we used to be able to. I'm old enough to remember when you could graduate from high school have a good head on your shoulders, a company would hire you and train you how to do some of this stuff. And you can move up. Now, you got to have a bachelor's degree or nobody wants to even look at you. Uh, like bring something to their company. And there's benefits to that, but there's, there's also an expense. Mm -hmm. There's also an expense. So if I don't have to pay it, and I can get you to pay it, just so, you talk, so you'll be able to talk to me, save me money. That's why they already, it's like the requirement job description. Oh yeah, have to have requirements it. that escalate, tend to escalate. 